There were many Swamis that came through New York in the 60s, 50s and 60s. Some of them were celebrity gurus and uh, some were yogis and they were all, all Mayavadis. And they were clever. They didn't explain the whole rest of the Indian culture at all. Um, they were what's called Panchupasaka. They, it, bhakti is um, only an uh, artificial uh, practice that you do until you merge. And there were some Buddhists also. I remember one Buddhist came through and there was a macrobiotic restaurant. And he said, I eat everything. You know, what do you mean Zen food? So there were a lot of phonies and they had the squinty eyes, you know. And a lot of people went for that. There was Dr. Mishra. My father had read Dr. Mishra's book. And we, in my house we did yoga and there was Bhagavad Gita. And uh, all interpreted Mayavad way. I had, my best one was the Theosophical Society Bhagavad Gita and that had a picture of an abbreviated universal form of Krishna, which uh, the verse said, and I hold all these worlds uh, like pearls on a thread with a fraction of myself, something like that verse from the ninth uh, chapter, I believe. And uh, so then I heard someone said that, uh, and we were exploring with, uh, yeah, experimenting with drugs. Some people were just partying with drugs, but many were using it to assume because the description of the symptoms of a drug are similar to the external symptoms of a liberated soul. You see things as equal. You have universal consciousness, cosmic consciousness. These were words that we were trying to achieve, and we all thought, that you meditate, meditate, and then one day, bing, the light goes on and you walk around uh, high. You know, we visited several swamis. Ramakrishna Mission had a place in 72nd Street, 75th Street, and people had all kinds of crazy ideas, and we had no direction. There was no, there was, none of the yogis gave any sadhana. They ate meat, they smoked. Swami Nikolananda was uh, translated the Gita also. He was, he was smoked. Um, none of them, uh, just do whatever you want. So then someone told me, uh, there's a Swami on uh, Second Avenue chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I said, I never heard of that, but then I, I went one night and uh, it was the 26th Second Avenue storefront, and I peeked in, and I asked a couple standing there who were looking in, I said, is this 26th Second Avenue? And they said, Pilgrim, your search has ended. So, it was a sign. And I went in, sat down, we were chanting. I had been doing, I sit in my lotus position. I thought I would tell, meet the Swami and Prabhupada, I always say, you know, looked like the CEO of the universe. No, never saw anyone. I was sitting right on the ground, on the on the floor, plain saffron robes, and uh, was was chanting. And he gave lecture on Sarvupadi Vinir Muktam Tatparatvena Nirmalam, giving up all false designations, that is the cure for human society. And then a few kept coming a few times and went up and asked Prabhupada all the Mayavadi arguments and he blasted me back one by one. It's in the book. And, um, and what I wanted to, about the book, I wanted to write not just about uh, Prabhupada's uh, you know, just physical character, and, uh, but his philosophy, his teachings. That this is our gift. This is our gift. Either the, the, the two the, the, the Eastern is uh, everything merge into void. That answers, that, that answers so many problems. The Western religion, God, like George Carlin says, there's an invisible man up in the sky and he's got 10 rules. And if you don't obey them, you go to hell where you burn forever. And he always needs money. 
It's all powerful, all knowledgeable, but he just can't handle money. You know? But he loves you. So, no, but he loves you. Why? Because he loves us. So these two things, one personal God and then one completely impersonal. So we tended towards the impersonal God because there's no rules. Some of the arguments that we all presented were if God is unlimited, how can he have a form? Form is limited. And, and right away he would just cut through. He didn't care about being uh, flattering at all. He would he'd just say, this is lack of knowledge. This is ignorance. Well, we'd say, well, in your religion, you say God is... This is not religion. This is knowledge. Just, and he would make many, many comparisons to the sun. Just like the sun. The sun has form? Yes. And the sun light is unlimited? Yes. The, the, the two exist simultaneously. This is our gift, inconceivably. A spark of sun cannot become the sun planet. A light bulb cannot become the powerhouse. Yes? Yet? Uh-huh. That's it. Similarly, if there's magnifying glass, you can make fire, bring down the sun. Then you can, so, blazing sadhus. So you can become, this is a guru, and also with Bhaktisiddhanta's term, and the guru is the transparent via media through. So Krishna is talking through an empowered soul. Kirtananda and I were the cooks. And uh, this leads into a great story. So he taught us one after another preparation. And uh, especially, it, it's pronounced chonk in America because we'd spell it different ways. We'd say chaunce sometimes. So we, we didn't know how to say it then either, but it's actually chonk. And it would smell up and the neighbors would complain, the landlord complained. But uh, you want to get it smoking and then put it in, you put it in your vegetables or you drop it in the dal. And we're cooking breakfast, a big, bowl, a big pot of cereal, and then lunch. And then you could never tell what Prabhupada was going to do next. This comes from when I read the Nectar of uh, Devotion. It says one of Krishna's qualities is his grave, gravity. And I thought gravity means serious. Krishna is not so serious. And the, then I look back down at the page and it says, Gravity is one, you never know what he is thinking. So one day Prabhupada says to me in Kirtananda, we should have a Sunday feast. And uh, invite the yoga the schools and the people, which leads into another story to remind me of getting the signboard. So he, uh, you know, he, he told Brahmananda, we must have one signboard with changeable letters so we can tell people the times of the classes. And Brahmananda comes back an hour later with no signboards. He says, Swamiji, the signboards cost $55. We don't have money for rent. He says, get one signboard. So he comes back with that black signboard with the movable white plastic letters. And that night, 75 people showed up. I passed the basket. My basket was full of money. So, but Prabhupada, earlier that day, comes up to the kitchen, he says, let me see what you have. And I open the pantry. This is just an apartment kitchen with four burners, a, a refrigerator, but we had a big pantry closet there. That was good. So I said, we have 100 pounds of sugar, 100 pounds of potatoes, 100 pounds of flour, 100 pounds of rice, 100 pounds of brown rice for the health people, 100 pounds of this. Hmm. And you, you couldn't tell what he meant. So I didn't know what. That night, the crowd were packed into the storefront, and Prabhupada is lecturing on Yejita Mang Prabhupada Tangsta. No, he's Yoga Kshemam Vyamaham. I carry what you lack and take away what you, you don't need. And, and then he, he said to me, in, your, in our kitchen, we have 100 pound rice, 100 pound sugar, 100 pound potato, 100 pound everything, 100 pounds. And we are just chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. You karmis, you're working so hard in your office job. Do you have 100 pounds? You don't have 100 pounds anything, he said. <laughs> so me and Kirtan on the luxury show. That's why he came up to inspect the, uh, the kitchen. Many things would happen. We'd say, oh, we have to get a machine. We have to get this. We have to fix the machine. And we'd say, you, you have this disease. And he gave the story 
Once there was a big storm and a fisherman came to a man's house, let me in, it's, it's storming. And the householder opened and says, well, you can stay here, but that net and that basket it stinks. You have to leave it outside. You can come in, come in. In the middle of the night, it, the fisherman is pacing up and down. And the man says, why can't you sleep? He says, I have to have that smell. I have to be. Okay, the storm is over. Go take your smelly bed. They're just like that, you Americans, you think you have to have anything, you have to have machine. And there was a big jug that, of water that couldn't stand up. The president said, give me that cloth. And he rolled it up, made a donut, put it down, and set the, the pot stable. He says, you do not have this kind of intelligence. Everything you must have machine. But it gave so many examples. And to jump ahead, in, uh, when we were starting the <clears throat> Vrindavan um, Krishna Balaram temple, I was talking to Gurudas and I said, what if we put our power and all this money into acquiring Radha Damodar temple and have something small in Raman Reti? He said, yeah, let's ask Prabhupada. And we said, what if we get Radha Damodar and have something small in Radha and, uh, Raman Reti? And Prabhupada said, I cannot think of anything small. That is my disease. Everything big. Even when I was a manager for Dr. Bosch's laboratory, and my plans were bigger than he could supply. And many people ask me, and I just came from Atlanta, Panihati, how can I please Prabhupada? I don't know specifically, but Prabhupada liked big. See, do something big and important. He said, there are rituals and, and functions and procedures, but main thing is to offer with your love. And the first mantra he only gave us was, um, Namo Brahmanya Devaya, Go Brahmana Hitaya, Cha Jagad Hitaya, Krishnaya, Govindaya, Namo Nama. He said, offer with that. Then one time, and then a box came with Jagannath Murti, and we didn't know what to think of this. This abstract art masterpiece and Prabhupada said, everyone bow down. He said, this is Jagannath, the Lord of the universe. And he, he, later on he told to Bon Maharaj, his guy brother, I've given them Jagannath because Jagannath does not have strict uh, arjunam. It's not so, it's having full murti. But uh, we had the painting, Jadarani was painting. He said, now she's become a fine artist. Her first paintings looked like cartoons. Big, you know, big fingers. <laughs> a lot of devotees from Christian background say, how did Lord Chaitanya die? How did Krishna die? And Prabhupada put on such a bitter face. And it is not important. And it is so distasteful, we cannot. He went into a temple and never. But the main thing is that uh, Jesus' death is the, the culmination of his leela, his, his purpose, his mission. But Lord Chaitanya Krishna's purpose is not dying. But when he first suggested the deities, I remember Hayagriva said, Oh, you want marble statues? You can go to the Catholic Church. And Prabhupada also just, mm, like, like, now I think back, he was just, they are not ready. You know? So he kept Hare Krishna Maha Mantra big in, in temples. Not so much temple. One time it gets mentioned that I, I told Prabhupada he liked it. That I was in Vrindavan and there was an Akhandananda Swami and Mayavadi, big, he was formless. Yeah, good for a Mayavadi. He was a huge Baba, uh, pure Shankara Mayavadi. And uh, a gentleman in Vrindavan asked me to come and meet him. He's here. They, I don't know why they have a, a temples in Vrindavan. If, to make Krishna disappear, I, I don't know. And I came there first, and now his followers were looking at me going, Namo Narayan, Namo, you know, they call each other Narayan. I was looking at do I look like Narayan? Do I have four arms? And they actually say that. Daridra Narayan, you know, the poor. So I was telling this to Prabhupada on the morning why I think it was in the Maidan, the Calcutta. I said, and then this householder, Akhandananda looked at me and he goes, 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and he said, it, and I felt like everybody in the world chant Hare Krishna, but not you. Don't say it was so disrespectful. And then the man said, try to ask some question. I said, I have no question. No, try to ask some question. I have no question. Because I know if I ask a question, he's going to talk my about it. And then later, Prabhupada thought that was a very strong move that, oh, he must have been very insulted that you didn't. I said, I don't care. And Prabhupada appreciated that. That, that happened on a morning walk. Prabhupada went back to America from Calcutta, going over the Pacific Way, and left me with the keys to uh, Radha Damodar Temple. And uh, it got kind of lonely there, and most people didn't speak English. And, uh, but Prabhupada's godbrother, Bon Maharaj, was there, and he spoke English. He didn't lecture so much. And one day there was an American there, Rishikesh, who had been initiated in America, and he had escaped or deserted the army. He had been through boot camp. And he told me the same things. If you've seen the movie Full Metal Jacket, they, he said, they make you sleep with your gun. You're going to give the gun a, a girl's name. And there was a fat guy who died. They were making him run. The same scene is in the movie 20 years later. So he had been through that kind of hellish thing. And he, uh, it was from Germany, I found out later. He, from Germany, some lieutenant said, kid, you're not going to make it. And uh, he told them how to get out. So he made it to India. And Bon Maharaj, I believe, kind of lied to him. He said, if you stay with me, you'll be protected. And if you leave, then I'll turn you in, almost. But what Rishikesh didn't know was that the Indian government would accept and give asylum to anybody who was um, legally or in, in legal difficulties. Uh, you're, you become... Uh, kind of a hostage right there for them. And then that means the other go country's government has to be nice to Indian citizens. So uh, Rishkes didn't know that. So I was going to Bonaraj. Bonaraj was teaching, really, Siddha Pranali, uh, giving Rishikes um, this uh, idea of uh, the um, eternal identity at the first initiation. He was talking more about this and, and other things. Of, he was disrespecting Narayan. Uh, not understanding the tattva between Narayan Krishna and Goloka Krishna, Vaikuntha, etc. And um, later on, though, I found out he had sent Rishikesh to collect money for Bon Maharaj's school. So then Rishikesh got the letter. Prabhupada wrote to Rishikesh that if you stay there, it is your spiritual death. And there's more to that letter, very, very harsh words he used. And uh, yeah, so you and the Chutananda, go to Mayapur with the Chutananda, and the only person I consider dependable is my godbrother Sridhar, Bhakti Raksha Sridhar Maharaj. A Chutananda knows him well. He's, we went to his Vyas Puja um, last year, and uh, there's a room there in the house. Can, so Rishikas didn't go, and I said, now's my chance, okay, to go to be with. Sridhar Maharaj, so that was around 1968. The spiritual master, this is a, a supernatural quality that his genuine spiritual master has, that when he speaks, everyone will hear it in their own way. So whatever rasa you are, you will pick up on that and take to it. And that is to be realized later. It was a tradition and a, a system of giving Siddha Pranali uh, at initiation up to Bhakti Siddhanta. But those disciples that came to the six Goswamis and Vishwanath Chakrabarti, Baladev, Jagannathas Babaji, Bhakti Vinodaka were already very, very advanced Vaishnavas. Or very, very advanced, maybe even very advanced Mayavadis, but then tunk, like immediately understanding the position of Krishna Tattva, Bhagavad Tattva, all of their study up till then fell into place, connected the dots. Then a guru can tell you, that you seem to have a, a, a dasya, sakya, vatsalya, madhurja, rasa, and give you an identity. Bhakti Siddhanta, is, by that time, of Kali Yuga's onset, he did not give it that way. You are a servant, and you're, uh, with your practice and sadhana, it will be revealed to you. 
But when I asked Sridhar Maharaj, can you tell me my Guru Maharaj's rasa? He said, yes, I can tell you, but now I'm feeling a little weak now. And he made me wait a whole day. And the next day I came to him and he started lecturing me and teaching. I said, but uh, you were uh, going to mm, tell me uh, Prabhupada's uh, rasa. Oh, yes. <laughs> it must be Madhurya because of his attraction to Kirtan. Madhurya has two aspects, Madhurya sweetness and Audarja compassion. Radharani is the leader of the Madhurya Shakti, Haladini Shakti, and she's always, always engaging, yukto always engaging other gopis to join in the Ras Lila in all of the seva. And as Mahaprabhu, as Kirtan. Now, I just heard last year there's a Mahant of Radha Kund in India. And uh, this was established by Jiva Goswami. Raghunath and Jiva Goswami established that they uh, actually, Jiva Goswami purchased the property, the land of Radha Kund, Shyam Kund, and 150 cottages, kutis around. The rent from that would all support the puja of Radha Kund. That's the way you set up a, te a temple for in perpetuity, is that there's all properties that can pay rent. Boom, you're fixed, set for life, forever. Well, there was taken over by families and then Babaji's and pseudo Babaji's. In 18, 1880, Bhaktivinoda Thakur met Jagannathas Babaji in Vrindavan. Somewhere between 188, and he was about 100 years old, Jagannathas Babaji and was well known, except that this is a Maha Bhagavad Purush. And it was somewhere after that, in the 1880s, Jagannath Das Babaji finally opened up and in public to the, in Surya Kunj, said to the Mahant, you are keeping women, I know it, and you've been doing it, and you all, and I'm leaving. I'm going to set up in Navadvip. This is as big as like the Pope saying, I'm leaving the Vatican, and going to stay in Paris from now on. This was a major event. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur then had association with him in Bengal after that. So the current Mahant, this is what I have heard, gives your, uh, for a fee, will give you your gopi name. Of course, there's always a gopi, right? Everybody's a gopi. So there were several, a whole group of um, uh, Europeans came and they all got their name after they, no receipt. And, but two of them were lifelong friends since they were little boys. They said, tell me your, your name. I said, well, I'm such and such gopi and I wear green and I have these and this bangles and I serve Lalita in this way, making garlands or something, the whole, and my parents are, and I'm married to so-and-so gopa. And, and the other one, the friend says, that's my name too. Let's talk to them. There's about 40 others. They all had the same. So he was just selling names. So this is the nature. And this has been going on for centuries. And it has been going on for centuries. And similarly, and it's an embarrassment to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. And since the time of the Goswamis and Jiva Goswami, especially then uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti and, and um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Bhaktisiddhanta, the, the enemy. Even when I was traveling in South India, people thought Chaitanya Mahaprabhu movement is this uh, erotic uh, Hindu hippie style. We were invited, I'm sure, we were invited by some South Indian playboy house where he thought that we would be hippies and we'd have party there. And when we show up, you know, we're just chanting sannyasis and brahmacharis, they were disappointed. Because they, they heard, even now, they, the reputation is carried on by the, the pseudo Sahajiyas. And the Prabhupada, one of, in my book, I have a list of Prabhupada's one liners. He said, It is the business of Maya to make our Krishna consciousness movement look ridiculous. And they're good at it. 
some people were saying the, 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 the Prabhupada, the Guru is God, you know. And I said, no, this is Sakshat Haritve no Samasta Shastri Ruktustatava Vyate Vasadvi, Kintu Prabhurdya Priya, because he is the most beloved of Krishna. He, there's Achintya Veda Vedatva, which is inconceivable. Now, if it's inconceivable, don't act on one or the other. So I had heard that one, time, one year they forgot Prabhupada's Vyas Puja, and they made him a birthday cake or something. And Prabhupada was very angry and said, come tomorrow, I will come back tomorrow and you do it the way I taught you. So what way was that? You worship the guru like God. So then they went the other way and they said the guru is God. One time he, devotees were asking Prabhupada, uh, different, is this going to happen, is this going to happen? And Prabhupada looked at me and said, what do they think, I'm God? <laughs> well, some of them did. In the uh, 26th Second Avenue, we would let anybody up to see Prabhupada because he would win them over. Jadarani uh, was learning guitar and some folk music from um, Reverend, Reverend Gary Davis. And it was a pastor, but he had some popular gospel records. He came up to see Prabhupada and others. But then we, uh, one man was, looked normal and we brought him up and they, upstairs he turned wild. And he says, today at 3.30 I was higher than you. And so this guy was stoned. And Prabhupada says, please accept my humble obeisances. Now, I have to work now. We brought him out. He says, I'm fearless. I, I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid. So Prabhupada said, wait, wait. Do you cross at the green light? He says, yeah. He says, you are afraid of death. Prabhupada, in the beginning, would always, well, always, is often describe Krishna consciousness as the unconditional state. Because and it was perfectly in tune with the idea, because we all thought that drugs could give you that. When you were on drugs, yes, you were beyond inhibitions. And, and then when we the first canto comes out with Sukhdeva Goswami walking naked and unaffected by anything, yeah, that's what I want to be when I grow up. You know, that's just to have no condition and be, you know, not need uh, material uh, things for myself. Be in the total independence. Brahmananda, Brahma Bhuta. Prabhupada wasn't imitating anyone. He had no act. He had no, uh, no, he wasn't performing. He was genuinely there and genuinely amazing. You know. And we could, we could tell because his answers would come right off the top. Or a, a, a verse. Or he'd hand you the Bhagavad Gita. Go to this chapter and read it. Want to get us used to reading so that this is not his own ideas. A big personality at that time was Krishnamurti. Um, his own fly. It was all his own thoughts. The Prabhupada was very much against that. There's no authority. Someone else can say something, and that's his opinion. These are not opinions. Prabhupada had a mystical quality of that when he would describe uh, in a lecture. He would cover every point of the lecture, from the jiva to Lord Chaitanya, to a loving relationship to Krishna, to Radharani, to um, every touch with the demigods, the position of the material nature. Every, he would cover everything. And quite often, he would come to the point and say, if you do not catch up on Krishna's lotus feet, again you will fall back into the ocean of Maya. And he'd make this gesture, like throwing a stone. Into, and it would come out. I, I also say, if... If you were to take any three, four of Prabhupada's books, take off the covers, shuffle the pages, and take any two or three pages, you'd, you'd read the whole philosophy. It covers everything in every point. So he kept saying, again, you will fall into the ocean of Maya, an illusion. So one day I was in the store with the Brahmananda, and another fellow was going, I don't like this. This is, I, this is nonsense. And he walked out, slammed the door. And I said to Brahmananda, he fell back in the ocean of material illusion. And Brahmananda went, bloop. This is how bloop was created. So that became our word 
down there when somebody was leaving, we'd say, oh, he's going to bloop. Look at that guy. He's, he's not, I think he's going to bloop. Boy, I hope I don't bloop. Where's so-and-so? I haven't seen him. Oh, he blooped. So we were up in Prabhupada's room, and Prabhupada said, where is that boy, Michael? And Brahmana said, oh, he blooped. Bloop? What is this bloop? So we all looked at Brahmananda. You made it up. You know, and he said, well, you've been explaining that we fall back in the ocean of Maya like a stone makes the sound of, and it hits the water, bloop. So we've been saying, when somebody leaves, they blooped. Well, then if he has blooped, what can we do? He said. So he immediately picked up one. And that is how bloop got invented. A reporter asked, one challenging reporter said, so what do you do? You walk on water? You, make, you turn water into wine? Brad said, there can be a beautiful woman here, naked. You will be attracted. I will not. And then another better reporter asked, uh, what's the purpose of human life? And Prad said, to enjoy. Enjoy in this way or enjoy with Krishna? But the answer was like that. I would have said, to, to surrender to the to spiritual master, uh, follow the regs and give up meat and do this and become a devotee. To enjoy. One of Prabhupada's envious God brothers' disciples told me that his guru said, well, if Lord Chaitanya wanted to spread the Harinam over the whole world, why didn't he go himself? And they told that to Prabhupada. He said, one of your God brothers said, why didn't Lord Chaitanya go himself? And Prabhupada said, because he saved that glory for me. That was very bold. One time in Calcutta, Prabhupada asked, he said, where is uh, Devananda? And someone said, he's washing his dhoti. And Prabhupada started to laugh and laugh and smack the He's washing his dhoti. And laugh, and the, it wasn't me, the devotee kept going, <laughs> Devananda is washing his dhoti. He was laughing and laughing. Finally, he stopped. And the devotee said, why were you uh, um, laughing? He says, you never know why I laugh. So, cannot figure out uh, uh, the mind of a Paramahansa. And when we established the deities in Calcutta, I was standing next to Prabhupada at the Arati, and Prabhupada's face just melted. He's so ecstatic. And I said, ah. Uh, they put the flute in backwards. And Prabhupada said, Krishna is all powerful. He can play from either end. <laughs> Bhavananda told me this story. They were in a big uh, department store in the West. And there was revolving doors in the middle and two swinging doors on the side. And a man gets into the, with a lot of bags, gets into the revolving door. Prabhupada gets into the section behind the man. And they go around, and the man with the bags in the next section stops and fumbles with it. So now Prabhupada's trapped in that set. They don't go backwards. He's stuck in the revolving door. So Bhavananda runs out the side door, comes out on the street, and Prabhupada's standing there with his cane, like that. And the man with the bags is still in the revolving door. I said, so how did he get ahead? He says, I don't know. He said, so. A mystical power there. I only saw him uh, relate to Sridhar Maharaj. The others um, were not so. And, and I could say, I met many of the living disciples of bhakti sannyasis and other uh, brahmacharis of uh, disciples of bhakti siddhanta and uh, they were all great souls but none of them had this way of being able to preach in the west no uh, they could not say to a reporter enjoy they wouldn't have that bhakti siddhanta said i've sent many of my 
he said to Sri Maharaj, they've sent to some men to England and they come back in suits. They're being converted. Now you go and I know you will keep it pure. And, but he never went, so he felt very bad for that. And then uh, when he was very proud of Prabhupada and supported him. The others, you know, respect. Now, I never heard any criticism of Prabhupada's book stuff from the God Brothers. No. They were envious, so they were this. They didn't like their women uh, together with men dancing. Uh, and other than Prabhupada said, well, you, <laughs> when you go to the West and preach, you'll see. But they never went, you know. They, but he would invite and, and request all of his God Brothers, come and join us. Some of them were living in Miserable, pathetic, eking out a living in, in a shack, but there would be a big signboard, you know, Krishna Chaitanya, you go to your institute. You know, uh, you know the pauper is proud of his penny, you know. And there, there were still, you know, that even, about, okay, uh, I heard that Lalita Prasad, Bhaktisiddhanta's brother, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's son. He looked just like Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And uh, another god brother just told me, you know, he was uh, maybe almost 100 years old, and they had to use his uh, bathroom, and they said it smelled like roses. But Prabhupada, I, I visited him, and I could see some of the handwritten books of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. I think we're having them scanned now. But Prabhupada said he was living in Bhaktivinoda Thakur's uh, place, own place in, um, what's the name of that place? Nagar, something Nagar. And Prabhupada said, we will take care of you. We will develop this place. It'll be an international center. Uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And Lalita uh, uh, Prasad said, yes, but I must be guru. You must step down and I must be Acharya. And Prabhupada said, okay, bye-bye. Yeah. And he looked at me and said, I, I didn't understand, uh, believe it, that even beyond after giving up lust, desire, pratishtasha, this desire for prestige lingers on even to, to the end. So we had that. That they kind of all wanted that. And by, many times I asked the God brothers, you know, what broke up the Gaudiya And Prabhupada, Prabhupada would always answer, uh, they were always worried who's going to give initiation. And he said, they couldn't wait a few years until a guru appeared, manifest. Then I told Prabhupada, one of your god brothers said uh, that quarrelsome was like the gopis unmada when Krishna disappeared. And he said, no, they were fighting over material properties and money. Then I asked another god brother, the South Indian Puri Maharaj Bhakti Vaibhav. Puri Maharaj, and he said he was initiated just before Bhaktisiddhanta's disappearance. I said, so you were there at the end. What broke up the Godiman? He said, the Brahmin-born sannyasis never liked associating with the non-Brahmins. Okay. And there are many more details about that, but that was there. As in discussing other lectures and gurus, um, he would say to them, some of the people would come that just came from a Krishnamurti lecture, and Prabhupada said, so what did he say? Well, he, um, <laughs> then a few weeks later was another one, so what did he say in this lecture? He was talking about problems and, uh, just see, he said, if it can't be said in simple language, it's bogus. He would say that a lot. And he could say it elaborately also, but he could also say it in simple terms. Like the one, uh, Krishna is the integral, the ingredient, and the uh, cause of all causes, the um, um, essential, efficient cause uh, of everything. And we knew what those words meant, but not in this theological context. He said, you want in simple words? I see you, I see your father. Your father had a head and two arms and like that. And his father, were any of your ancestors some formless power? And the out came grandpa? You know. It is nonsense. That was another thing that impressed me. 
and others. And Prabhupada was, was completely poor and insolvent. And he was blasting all the other, uh, the, the state or the main beginning of the other Mayavadis, all the religions are one. We all, and you know, said, no, they're not, you know. You know, even the line in um, the Gandhi movie, uh, when Jinnah, the Muslim leader, says to Gandhi, not every, India is not comprised of Mahatma Gandhis. There's going to be riots in Hindu, Muslim, and there were. So, but all of these, the Ramakrishna mission begins, all religions, same. And Prabhupada would say, we do not accept that. We reject that. We, you know, it's not flattering anybody. It's not, uh, not watering down anything. Even if it could have been, like we all could have walked out, but he wouldn't have changed. He wouldn't have changed. A lot of people did walk out. I don't believe this. I don't. No. In the beginning, we had Back to Godhead was out a few months, and uh, Prabhupada said, uh, oh, we came to Prabhupada and said, would you write an article for Back to Godhead? As the founder, he said, are all your articles based on what you heard from me? Said yes. Says then I write all the articles. This is the Ajinta Veda Veda relationship between everything, but between guru and disciple. In the very beginning, it would just now stand up and say something about Krishna consciousness. Hey, all one is. So we were always thinking we were reading, and then going out with the back to Godhead or something, or in Kirtan, what to say, what to say, and people would hit us with so many different lines and. We'd respond somehow. And sometimes, and now, hundreds, millions of examples of uh, people out on book distribution getting. One lady just told me, she said, I went, there was this big, ugly biker. She showed him a book. Hey, what's this? Is well, you want to go to heaven or hell? He said, well, I want to go to heaven. So you think in heaven there's a slaughterhouse and they eat meat up there with blood all over? He said, no. Well, hey, read this. And she said, I don't know why I said that. It just came out. It just comes out. Krishna puts words in your mouth. You'd always ask for questions. One time we didn't have, one time there were no questions. He said, you must have some question. Try to put some question. You know everything? And another time he finished a lecture. He said, are there any questions? And there were no questions. And then he said, how can there be any question? Because <laughs> he had covered everything. A lady asked, I have so many doubts, though. And he said, doubt is symptom of intelligence. Keep asking questions. This is not blind faith. But then after that crazy man with the, uh, the three o'clock thing, then he said, do not bring up any more crazies. So then he was giving us, the first time he was giving us some responsibility that we have to know who to bring, who not. And that made us feel, then Prabhupada was also reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, and he came, he was discussing, reading the chapter of Sri Vasangan, when only, only special devotees of Mahaprabhu were allowed into that. So we felt like this was Sri Vasangan, that storefront. It became like that to us. Prabhupada said this twice, and, and, and then always, and apparently it's very necessary in in India, the spiritual master would say, are you going to take initiation and then go away? Or are you going to stay and learn and practice? And we wondered why he'd say that, because of course we, we'd stay and learn and practice even without the ceremony. What is the point of need for this? He said, the ceremony is needed to make impression on the mind. But otherwise it is not so much. Now, a lot of people ask me about initiation, initiation. Uh, if you're practicing and, and studying, then you find someone that can help you practice and study, that's enough. Not throwing ghee. You know. And if it is not practice and study, because now people are going just to say, I have a guru, and for many, many material motivation, motives, um, you know, that I want the guru that doesn't ask for too much dakshina, I want the guru. Well, if you can't chant 16 rounds, chant one. I like him. You know. But, you know, gurus will be like that. Guru is also, he will respond according to as they approach. 
So you have some easier, he may not, he may reject. He may say, wait. Wait another year. One of the letters that um, the prophet wrote to me, he would just tell me where he was going. And then I'm going to Paris, and then I'm going to Hamburg, and they have a center in, in Boston or in Canada. And then, but then a letter came, I'm coming to India. And one, one letter he wrote, I may not come back to India. I may you know, live on and uh, pass away anywhere in the, in the preaching. Just being in, in the fire of preaching is Vrindavan. But then he let it come, and then he sent me. Uh, Jai Pataka came to join, and we're going to set up in India. And I realized the preaching was going to be big. He was going to do something very important in India. And then I asked him for sannyas. I'd like to do it in the form of a sannyasi, this India preaching. He said, yes, and Jai Pataka too. So I told Jai Pataka, and we had our sannyas. And Jai Pataka says this, because Prabhupada had initiated, given sannyas to eight, Americans in, in America, and Jai Pataka says to me, you are the ninth and I'm the tenth. I said, why is that? Because he, he said, I got my dunda first, and then he got his dunda eight seconds after me. So he says, I'm senior to him, <laughs> eight seconds. I think he's senior to me in a lot more ways, but, but he regards that. He was counting. One time he was in Gujarat, fabulous feast. And the devotee said, yeah, are they devotees? He said, we are eating and offering the finest food in the world to Krishna. These dishes have been made for centuries and offered to Krishna. And one time Tamal asked to Prabhupada, is this food good for you? And he said, not good for me, but good for my tongue. Did I meet Prabhupada's uh, former family? Yes, and we were invited to uh, Sridhar Maharaj's Vyas Puja in October, and we were in Vrindavan at the time, so we went up to Delhi and then over to Calcutta, and we stayed with the Mullik family. That's the picture on the book of us dancing with, uh, this is his former family, the Mullik's, um, who maintain the Radha Govinda temple in Calcutta. Prabhupada had left a monthly amount uh, to all of his family members so that they wouldn't c come with some claim. You know, he, he took care of them very well in, those, in that time there. Too. He had daughters and son. And then Bhavananda was there and they had a sign. And he came back and said, I met her. I said, her who, her? Her. Her. Oh, yes. There was another lady there and, and she was like, oh, yeah. Kiyoche, very nervous. I don't know why they were so nervous. I'm there to have them sign off, and they knew that I was, they were going to be getting a monthly amount, handsome amount. Well, I said, I know why they were nervous. He might show up. They start seeing you with saffron. They start seeing saffron robes around the house. What if he walked in? He'd probably burn them to ashes if, if uh, she <laughs> came in his presence. Because she was also, you know, Vaishnava devotee. Prabhupada once said about her, he said, she was a very faithful and good wife, but I never liked her, he said. <laughs> uh, this other boy, he said she had the, the cleaning disease. You know this story? She was cleaning a light bulb, a socket. He says, if you don't put that down, I will kill you. He said, she was cleaning everything. It was a mental... Uh, disease of coming of, I think it's called mesophobia. You want to clean, clean. So, so spend hours in the bathroom and a shower cleaning. It was, so she said, I had the cleaning disease. So, yeah. There's no one quality or one uh, event to, that stands out. All of his life is not a single gesture or, or event happened that didn't push on this moment. I don't I calculate, I tried to calculate that Prabhupada probably composed about a hundred pages of literature a, a week, if we think of the body of work that he did, this is, which is impossible, and run a movement, and have lecture tour, and travel around the world. My comment about Prabhupada's rasa 
Madhurya, uh, is that Madhurya rasa doesn't mean just talking about gopis. It means getting on a boat, 70 years old, with nothing, and going to a foreign country, landing with $9, and, and pushing and making a worldwide mission. Prabhupada spoke to a gentleman from India uh, who said, oh, you're here? Uh, uh, preach? He says, yes, I have, I have disciples. I have, we have temples all over the world. There is a famous singer who has chanting Hare Krishna on a record that is worldwide. Our magazine is selling thousands of copies a month, and none of this had happened yet. He said, it is just a matter of time. Also to his god brother Obiel Kapoor, he said, before he left, he said, I will tell you when I come back what my formula was to be a success. And when it was a success and he came back, he said, the formula, Trinada Pisu Nietzsche Nantaroda Pisu Hishnam. Like, and the boy said, we, we shared, four of us, uh, Jadurani, Brahmananda, Kirtana, we shared the bathroom, we had one towel. We all shared. There's a picture somewhere of devotees standing in line to use the bathroom, and Prabhupada has his towel, and he's like fifth in line, and he's waiting. Waiting with his towel and waiting in line. And the devotees are right ahead of him. So we didn't know. Because we're here. He's saying the unconditional being, I and mean, he was certainly unconditional. He had, had no, no uh, effects of, of this material world. We didn't know how to behave with him. And he wouldn't say. The Avanti uh, Sannyasi in Bhagavatam. His guru said, now that you've taken sannyas, go back to that village where they hate you. And he took all that. Well, now they've insulted me. They've stolen my dhanda. They've put stool in my begging bowl. They've tied me up. and Go back. Jai you